Hello beautiful people. Thank you so much for tuning in, watching and listening. This is going to be the mid, excuse me, this is going to be the May 2024 reading for the zodiac sign of Aries. I seriously cannot believe we're already talking about May. It's blowing my mind. But anyways, as always my readings are very intuitive, so I'll provide you with any intuitive messages they receive as well as the meaning of the tarot cards. I do have a recommend you check out your sun, moon, and rising just to get a full picture of everything that's going on for you this month. And if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. When you subscribe, that helps me greatly, and you'll be notified when I post new content. <coughs> but let's go ahead and get into it here. So, column number one, we're going to take a look at any big messages that are coming for the month of May. Column number two, we're going to talk about anything related to money. Column number three, we're going to talk about anything related to love. And column number four, we're going to do a message for our future self or spirit guides, which is almost like advice for the month of May. We'll also do three yes or no questions, a crystal of the month, and a healing note for you, Aries. But again, let's get started. Column number one, those big messages coming for the month of May. So first you have the summary affirmation card of renewal. So this is a pretty literal card. This is renewing your energy. This could be renewing an apartment lease. This could be renewing your focus. This could be renewing your relationship. But there is some sort of renewal coming for you in the month of May. Let's see what kind of messages I have here for you. All right. Whatever renewing, we are renewing. It definitely looks good here, Aries. Uh, column number, or excuse me, card number one here, we have the King of Pentacles. The King of Pentacles is very solid, practical wise. So in short, I feel like whatever this is, we're renewing. Again, maybe it's the place you live. Maybe it's a job contract. Maybe you're revisiting an old relationship. Maybe you're starting on a project or restarting on a project. Uh, it just seems like it's the good choice. It's the right option. It's a good investment. It's a good way to put your time. Um, so I like to see this. This is a good investment. This is a good choice. The next card that we have is the King of Wands. The King of Wands is very bold, very powerful. This comes as like our power moves, our really solid moves. So again, this is a good move for you. This is a good choice. This is a good move. And the next card we have is the Three of Wands. The Three of Wands is a card of having a plan. So do make sure that as we renew, whatever this is, that we have some sort of plan. So now that we're repicking this up or we're deciding to continue this, make sure that we have a plan going forward here, Aries. But this is also like growth, expansion. Um, so I feel like this is good. Again, I feel like this relationship is going to expand and grow this opportunity is going to expand and grow. This is also a commerce card, so in terms of money, I feel like this could be a really good money move for you as well. Let's take a look at our clarifiers. So first up, we have the Wheel of Fortune. If you've watched my readings before, you know I love the Wheel of Fortune. It's one of my favorite cards in the entire deck. It's a card of good luck. It's a card of good fortune. It's a turning point though. And in this case, again, I feel like this is continuation or this is restarting of something, but it looks so promising. This is exactly the renewal, the exact change that you needed. So I love to see that. Good luck, good fortune. Again, it does seem to potentially be a money move between the King of Pentacles, the Wheel of Fortune, as well as the Three of Wands. So I do think money could be connected in here somehow. The next card that we have is the Judgment card. The Judgment card is a card that's always favorable for you. Not surprised to see this. Again, this renewal is a good choice. It's the right thing to do. Um, but this is also like getting clarity, which makes sense. I feel like you'll have the information that you need, but this is also making a decision. So again, the decision to renew, the decision to uh, invest here, proceed forward here. And at the bottom here, we have the death card. The death card doesn't mean death, but this is like change. This is transformation. In this case, this is renewal. This is continuation. So this is uh, moving forward, moving on here. Um, so I like the pairing here. It's interesting though, because I feel like it's something we've had before, but it will be better this time for whatever reason. 
All right, moving on to our next column, we're gonna talk about anything related to money. So quick money message here for you, Aries. To schedule a day to explore a zip code closest to your dream reality, pay attention to the feelings that come up while you are there. So in this call, we're going to talk about anything related to love, or excuse me, anything related to money, family, friend, oh my goodness, anything related to money, job, career, finances, businesses you run, investments you have, whatever you associate with money, we will talk love next. Okay, so first up in our money column, we have the Page of Swords. So this can be kind of a gossip card, it can be kind of a drama card, um, I feel like there's somebody that's watching you too. This is kind of like prying eyes. So I do feel like somebody's kind of keeping an eye on you, kind of keeping an eye on your work. I usually tell people when I see the page of swords to kind of try and avoid the water cooler talk, avoid the drama, try and stay abrupt above the fray where we can hear Aries. This could also on the other side though be truth coming out. So I do think there's some swirl. I feel like there's some gossiping happening. I do think the truth will come out. Uh, but again, the way that you react, the way that you respond, the quality of work that you're doing, somebody is watching. I wouldn't say they're keeping an eye on you, but they want to see your reaction. They want to see that you're doing good work. So there is somebody kind of looking over. The next card that we have is the tower card. The tower card is always one of those tower moments. This can be like unwanted change. This is kind of could come as like a shock or as a surprise. I always tell people like we plan for A, B, C, and D, E, F ends up happening. So again, I do feel like there's gossip, there's drama, there's kind of like information swirling. So something has come up, there's some sort of event happening and there's like everyone's trying to interpret or analyze what they think it'll be. Um, I do think you'll get the truth of the situation and I don't think it'll be what we expected. So do unfortunately kind of expect this unexpected event. The nice thing with the tower card though is this always like, it's course correction. It puts you where you need to be. It has you doing exactly what you need to do, Aries. So this will be favorable for you, but again, it's gonna come off as something unexpected, something we didn't want, something we hadn't planned for. At the bottom we have the Two of Cups. The Two of Cups is typically a relationship card. We do have a really nice circle of support here. We're well supported. You have good relationships here. Again, I feel like somebody's watching and you've been doing good work. Um, so I feel like your relationships are really going to help you guide you through whatever this situation is. Potentially there could be a decision though. You might be like given the choice to go between one or two teams to so, like go here or go here through this unexpected event. So I do see there's like a decision that's falling to you here, Aries. Let's take a look at our clarifiers. First up, we have the Eight of Swords. Again, I would just stay away from the gossip. I would stay away from the drama. Stay away from the swirl. The Eight of Cups, or excuse me, the Eight of <laughs> the Eight of Swords is like a card of isolation. It's that kind of step back, it's that kind of separation there. The next card that we have is the Nine of Cups. I love to see this actually. So this is a card of wishes coming true. So again, things don't go as planned, things don't go as expected, but I feel like this will actually be really favorable and really positive for you. And it reiterates what I was saying with the Tower card, that this is sometimes a course correction card. It puts you on a different path, but this is again, really beneficial. Um, I feel like there could be more money here. There's more abundance in this new opportunity. So this shakeup, although it is a shakeup, I think it's a really positive shakeup for you here, Aries. And at the bottom here, we have the Six of Cups. Uh, again, I feel like you have the option to go either way. I feel like you get to pick and choose what you want here with the Six of Cups. Um, this is very like nostalgic and very innocent too. So I don't feel like you're going to be hurt by this situation, if that makes sense. Again, you also have really good relationships that are protecting you and are gonna guide you through this. Okay, taking a look now, oh my goodness, all I wanted to do is talk to you about love apparently. So let's see what love messages we have here, Aries. So quick message here, new beginnings, a new adventure awaits, embrace it and live your dreams passionately. So this call, we're going to talk about anything related to love, family, friends, relationship, children. 
marriage. All right, this tells a story in itself here for sure, Aries. So first up we have the Five of Wands. This is like a card of rivalry, obstacles, challenges. I feel like there was just this conflict that kept coming up, this issue that kept coming up, and it got to the point where we couldn't get past it. We have the Eight of Cups here, which is a card of withdrawing, retreating, moving on. So I do feel like a relationship ended after repeated conflict. Again, we just couldn't get over this. This one thing kept coming up. There is this recurring issue. However, now we're at the bottom here, which is the Page of Cups, and this is a new love card here, which ties so nicely into our New Beginnings card. So I feel like after this ending to a not very good relationship, we have this opportunity to enter into this really lovely new love situation with the Page of Cups. Let's take a look and see what other cards I can give you here, what other messages. First up, we have the Moon card. The Moon card is a card of unexpected um it's like delusion it's illusion things weren't what what we thought they were we couldn't kind of see through i feel like there could have potentially been some lying involved um but this is voluntary change so again this is deciding to move on let the relationship run its course and move away from it the next card that we have is the Six of Wands. So typically this is like a victory and success card, but this is battle. And I feel like, again, we had this battle and we were tired of having the battle. And that's what we're letting go of. That's what we're moving away from. We're tired of that kind of constant issue, that constant battle we were having. Sorry, the kitty wanted to come pay us a visit here, of course. And then at the bottom here, very, very fitting, we have the Fool card. This is the first card in the Major Arcana. Fresh hope, taking chances, new paths, adventures, beginnings, new love, new beginning. That is uh, hitting that message home there for you. All right, now let's take a look at our fourth and final column, which is a message from our future self or spirit guides. We have the summary affirmation card here of space. So don't hesitate to give yourself some time and some space this month. I feel like we're busy, but we're not like abnormally busy. So if you feel like you need a break, if you feel like you need space, if you need more time to do something, give yourself that time, give yourself that space. But let's see what messages we've got going on here. So first up we have the chariot. The chariot's a card of action and change. It's about being on a journey. I do feel like we're on a journey in a couple different things here. I do feel like there's some career shift coming. There's some love energy shifts. Again, this is action, it's change. It's about being on a journey. One thing that's nice with the chariot, <coughs> excuse me, we don't always have to know where we're going. We can trust that the chariot's gonna take us to the right place. So feel really confident about that. And again, take time to process. There's a lot of different moving pieces here, right? The next card we have is the Queen of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles is very resourceful. This is about using your time, your energy, your money, your words. In this case, it's your time and you can take the time, you can take the space that you may need. They're your resources to use for you. At the bottom, we have the Seven of Cups. If you take a look, there's something different happening in each of these cups. There's a lot of options, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of different little moving pieces we talked about. But we're kind of like non-committal here too when we see a card like the Seven of Cups. So it's like we're not fully ready to move to the new career. We're not fully ready to dive into the new relationship perhaps. Those are just examples. Um, but it's like you can give yourself a little bit more time and space to process and think this through. You don't just have to jump in. Um, so keep that in mind. That'll help with some of that non-committal energy is just giving yourself the space, the time that you need here. Looking at our clarifiers, first up we have the Five of Wands. Um, I feel like there could be like little things that pop up. Again, I feel like this is more about being non-committal. You're like, what if this? What about this? Again, we have the time to think it through, pause, take whatever time, space, energy we need to think things through. The next card that we have is the Four of Pentacles. The Four of Pentacles is a card of desire for long-term security. These are the things that we want, um, which I like to see. So I feel like we're moving towards the things that we want here. Again, no harm in taking time and space to work through them. 
Also, again, using the resources, using your resources to get the things that you want. Very much so you focused. At the bottom here, we have the King of Pentacles. This is very strategic, very intentional. Again, we don't have to jump into anything that we're feeling non-committal about. We can take the step back, make the plan, and be very intentional in our actions. All right, Aries, at this point, I'm going to give you the opportunity to ask three yes or no questions. We're going to use the Gypsy Witch Fortune Telling Deck. If you don't have three questions in mind, you can pause the video here and think of them. But question number one, we have the King of Diamonds, number 15 card. That's going to be a yes. Question number two, we have the Ten of Hearts, number seven card. That is going to be a yes. And question number three, we have the Three of Spades, number 10 card. Look at you go. Three yeses across the board there. We're also going to pull a card from our healing notes deck, or healing stones deck, which is a crystal to keep with you through the month of May. You have fluorite, which is good for order, structure, knowing when to say no, clarity of thought, and a healthy ego. Last but not least, we're going to pull a card from our healing notes deck. Your healing note says, part of the healing process is to share with people who care. Thank you so much, Aries, for tuning in, watching, and listening. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, follow. That helps me greatly as I'm trying to grow my channel. Also, I did include my Venmo in the comments box if you'd like to make a donation. But thank you so much, and I hope you have a wonderful May.